Hi there guys, Thomas Peters here. I want to show you how to set up an airbus flight from A to B probably uh, so you can actually uh, get the most out of your simulators. It's very important that everything is set up probably in an airbus. So I'm going to do a couple of videos depending on how much time I'm going to have the next couple of days. But the uh, first one here will try and take a look at how to power up the uh, cockpit and also set up the MCDU and if time permits start on this well I'm not gonna go into details about our objectives and I'm not gonna go into details about the graphics and so on okay uh, I'm definitely not gonna focus on the graphic today not at all actually this is just uh, preparation for uh, for the flight and also uh, start of the of the Airbus and then the next video will be uh, taxi take off and so on. Uh, this is the first time I'm trying this with a video capture, so bear over with me and uh, let's see what we can do. Good, first of all we have entered the uh, cockpit and what we are seeing here is a very black cockpit. Uh, we have actually no uh, power and uh, as I can see like this uh, we up here have external power available, the green light external power, so what we can begin with is actually just to turn on the power. We want to go up and see if there are any uh, uh, numbers up here in the battery, that's not uh, correct. We want to make sure that uh, the battery is, is on as well. And uh, there is this uh, philosophy in the Airbus concept that all lights in the top must be out then everything is actually working uh, probably good we have uh, put on now some external power and now we want to turn on the lights a little bit actually here in the uh, simulator you turn on the lights down here floodlight like this and uh, then we should be able to see Good, let's jump back to the uh, screen and let there be light. Now the overhead panel is uh, very nice brightened up. Good, um, normally I have a, a long checklist that I run through and uh, probably, I don't know what, what you guys have out there, I don't want to run through the checklists, uh, maybe we can do that in another session. Right now I just want to uh, get you get you going in a proper manner and also to, to set up the MCDU, the FMS. But uh, anyway, <coughs> if you take the overhead panel, we just want to make sure first of all that uh, we don't have any uh, lights up here that is not supposed to, to, to be here. One of the very important things is to line up all our uh, navigation computers. We do that up here. We have three of them. IA, one, two, and three. Now default in this sim, uh, they are all set to navigation. I do have the extreme prologue, I think it's called, uh, Airbus, and uh, not all the functions are actually working, so therefore I don't want to go into to details with that. But normally what we do is turn on the cruise supply down here, oxygen. Up here we put the ground control into auto and we do the uh, cockpit voice recorder test here as well. Okay, a lot of functions. Um, basically, what we can do is test the APU fire switch before we turn on the APU. So we do that. It doesn't work here in this sim, unfortunately. But we have done it. Let's go down to the APU master switch. Click on the master switch. And uh, now we are ready to start up the uh, APU. So I click start. And then I can show you actually the uh, uh, the other screens. That okay, as soon as we actually turn on the uh, master switch, the screen here on the ECAM is actually changing. And then when I push the start button on the APU, you'll be able to see that uh, the start sequence for the APU uh, begins. It says flap opens here, and you can see the EGT 
rising now it's actually falling again and it's almost up and uh, running on 100 percent now you can see the apu generator starts to deliver power into the system now it comes up and tells us it's available so basically now we can use the apu as a uh, as a power source great now using the apu as a power source we do that actually here in the Airbus by just switching off the external power. Then it normally jumps to the, uh, or automatically jumps to the uh, APU power. So let's turn off the external power like this. And it comes up and tells us the external power is available and everything is actually run. All the power is run by the APU. Uh, now, if we now. go back to the ECOM page and uh, we click on the ELEC page here. This is the ACOM screen, and you can see the ELEC page now. And uh, down here we have the APU generator delivering all the power up to our lines. As you can see, we have this line and this line. I don't want to go into details again, but as you can see, we have a supply here and also an external power. But the external power is not connected to our systems. Good, that was the electricity. Let's uh, continue a little bit. Good. The next thing we want to do is uh, jump to our uh, MCDU, our FMS, and start to build up the uh, the flight. Today we can do a flight from the uh, Fair Islands to uh, Copenhagen. So you can see how I would uh, set that up in in real life as well. Okay, guys. Programming the MCDU here is a very, very important part of the uh, uh, Airbus, actually. It, uh, the, uh, as we say, the Airbus is the easiest airplane to fly if you know how to do it and everything is set up properly. Otherwise, it will be a very, very difficult aircraft to, uh, to fly. Now, it's very important that the computer here will be set up properly. And we start, we have a sequence. We start up here at the data button where we go in and check the aircraft status. We want to make sure it's the correct engines and we want to make sure it's the correct database. Again, my extreme uh, Airbus here is not uh, configured properly, but in real life, I would make sure that the active database is the one that's actually uh, valid. Next thing, I go to the init page. And here we have to enter a CD pair. What I will do here, Echo Kilo Victor Golf to Echo Kilo Charlie Hotel, like this. And also an alternate. Today we can take a pylon in Denmark. And again, the flight plans, so you can see everything on the flight plans, especially for you guys who is on my uh, Facebook group, the uh, uh, simulation and aviation group and if you are in this group we sometimes upload some real life flight plans and you can see everything uh, in these uh, flight plans as in real life the flight number for this flight let's call it uh, Alpha Bravo Charlie 123 up here um, in the simulator we have to align the ISs here a little bit different in the right uh, the correct aircraft sorry in the live aircraft uh, cost index and number and the cost index can be set from I think it's from 0 to 200 where 200 uh, the aircraft will fly as fast as it can all the way and uh, uh, like I think 0 or is it 5 or so which is the lowest um, the aircraft will tend to fly the most economically uh, that you you can again fuel is very expensive and actually what we have found out up here is that we are using cost index 15 it is actually a variable factor but anyway we don't want to get too deep into that let's put the cost index 15 here the flight level today which you can see on your flight plan as well we have filed flight level 390 good then we go to the flight plan we want to depart from the Faroe Islands, depending on the winds. Um, today, we can use runway 30 for departure. And also, normally when you choose a departure, you also choose an SID. Uh, in my database here, there are no SIDs for the Faroe Islands. We do have some up here, but this is for our INP operation. The simulator here cannot do INP, unfortunately. I click the Insert button. 
Now it says Eco Kilo Victor Golf 3.0 for one way 3.0. Then of course we need a waypoint after that. So we click on Varga up here again and the next waypoint we can put in Mike Yankee here and we take the one that is closest to us, this one, check the position like this and we have Mike Yankee up here and insert that. Next thing is actually to go from Mike Yankee and we want to go out and again you can see that on the flight plan UATC route to the next waypoint. In our case it's uh, Gunpa. We go directly from Mike Yankee to Gunpa. Also you can click on Gunpa here and for example put in an ATC airway and then the next waypoint. Uh, my system is not set up to that again, but anyway, uh, next waypoint after going back could be solar. Just put it in like this. And after solar, we can go to Trano in Denmark. Again, take a look at your flight plans to see your ATC routing. Good, now we are Trano. We are, um, we want to find an uh, arrival into Copenhagen here. So what I can do is click Copenhagen, click on the arrival. And today, with the wind that we have down there today, we'll be using runway 22 left. In Copenhagen, they normally use the left runways, L for landing and right for takeoff. Good, ILS, runway 22 left. And uh, normally, arrival into Copenhagen would be, uh, yeah, we can take a TSP1 Foxtrot here and click insert. Good, and then there is this flight plan discontinuity. We do like this, clear them like this, and then everything is actually uh, planned. Good, now we do have a Trano up here and we got two waypoints, Tespi and Rosby down here. Um, if we clear the Trano up here, then we have the fully correct flight plan. And I can just show you actually on the planning screen how it uh, how that looks. So okay guys, show. what you need to do in order to see the flight plan on your navigation display is to put this row selector here into plan mode and then you can, you know, change the uh, range as you, uh, as you like. So let's step here from point to point. We go from Varga to Mike Yankee, Mugines. Then we go to Gunpa. Then we go to Sola, to Tespi, Rosby, Trano, and then the arrival into fix to to left and then into the eyeless. So basically, that is the route that we are going to. Uh, next step in real life would be to set up the secondary flight plan where we actually just uh, copy the active flight plan and then we build in our escape routes or if any malfunction happens, then we will, uh, uh, then we will of course uh, follow the secondary flight plan or activate that. It doesn't work here in the extreme uh, simulator here, but uh, I guess in the future versions it would uh, definitely uh, work. Good, so we started at data, init, and then flight plan, and then the secondary flight plan. Then we're gonna go to the right now. Here we put in our radio navigations aids. And uh, for this flight, I would use runway 30 for departure. I know the uh, back course localizer has frequency 109 decimal 1. So we just put them in like this. Share Foxtrot it's called. Good, next step will be to put in some weights and uh, we click on the init again and then next page. Then up here we can insert some uh, weights. If you right click it will take uh, the uh, the weights that you actually have inserted in your flight simulator. So if you just like, uh, you know, click on the right mouse button and then you'll get the zero fuel weight uh, that's entered. So it's 54.8, the CG will automatically be inserted as well. If you click on the right uh, button again, you'll get block fuel 4.4. Now 4.4 is uh, not enough to go to Copenhagen. So just for the uh, 
flight today will put in seven tons. Then we definitely have enough fuel to go to uh, to Copenhagen. So now the system actually knows that the aircraft's weight will be the takeoff weight 61.6, landing weight is 56.8. Over here, trip fuel 4.8, flying time 1 hour and 59. And in real life, we'll also put in the trip fuel here to the alternate. You're not able to do that here in the uh, uh, in the simulator. Super, that was the uh, weight. Then the next thing we like to do is to enter some performance data. Up here again, if you right click, then the simulator knows the speeds for the weights that you have uh, that you have entered. And over here we need to put in a flaps config setting. Today I'll use config one, and uh, I have uh, seen on the load sheet that my trim setting will one will be 1.0 up. Down here you put in your flex temp. Uh, if you're going to do a torque at departure, uh, that means uh, max thrust, then you don't enter anything. And also down here, thrust reduction and acceleration and engine out acceleration. This is all very important. Um, thrust reduction, this is actually where the uh, aircraft will come and tell you, you have to uh, go into your, the next phase to your uh, trust, sorry, your climb trust phase. And then actually also uh, 1700, you'll start your acceleration phase and your clean up uh, uh, phase. Uh, engine out, this is if you get an uh, engine failure, the system will uh, of course know that you have an engine failure and it will automatically start the acceleration phase at 1780. But again, these uh, altitudes are something that you enter according to your procedures. I don't know how much you'll use it in the simulator, but uh, but anyway, it's uh, it's uh, it's there. Good. Uh, next thing, we can go over here to the progress, and we can uh, see that our GPS is accuracy high right now, and the estimated accuracy of our GPS is 0 0.12. So basically, that was the setup of the MCDU, and what we have set up here is the absolute minimum you need to do in order to make a proper, uh, a proper flight. Good. Let's go.